sat on the bank there and there's an old chair. It's still there, an old table that we had, that we brought down with us so we could have a sandwich yeah. and have our lunch and think about it. And that must be, Yvonne would have the correct year, it would be about eight years ago. This is where we did our planning and our scheming and our, the thoughts of the restaurant. We'd come every day we possibly could come and we'd work through just about till dusk. When we came here, there was no trees, there was no pathway along there, as you can see now. It was uh, nothing, just nothing. And then slowly, we started to plant stuff. Plant whatever we could get hold of. We didn't have a lot of money, I can assure you, by any means. So we were glad of anybody giving us any help in any way, in uh, advice or plants or whatever they thought when they came down here, such as putting the agapanthas there. Um, they're hardy, but it was the end that we thought was a good place to put them. So there they still are looking pretty sick with this drought, but uh, they're there. And sage, sage I must say, was the one I would like it to be like it is in France have it, as you can see, a small square, a larger square, and a bigger square. And uh, he, he formed in his mind then, and he started to map it out. When he started to map it out was when we then uh, took up our spades and, and it fell in place. He, he was the leader. That was Serge. He was the leader as you might say, in thought of what we could do with this flat piece of land here. And then as we were pre re repairing, building up and doing this gardening, is when uh, I think either Sasha or Yvonne said, we could have something up there, couldn't we, in a way of a bit of a cafe and building. And then it, that started to grow. We talked to others architects and people like that and uh, it started to take off in our minds that something could be built there well that has a lot of problems up there to build retaining walls and goodness knows what but still that's where we sat on that old chair over there under that one particular tree scheming and planning what we were going to do here the claret ash, just about to turn colour. And I thought it was nice, good to have it, just at the end of the, down the steps, then the archway, and then down to here. It's really lovely. These, these little bushes are very uh, accommodating. We've got two there, box of Sempervirum, because we had a, where the lawn is, was gardens before, and that was a walk into the gardens. We grew some lovely tomatoes and cabbages and lettuce and all sorts of, just a big vegetable garden to the restaurant when it was open, you see. And then when it came about four years ago, that there was going to be a depression and everybody feared that there was and ah oh, dear me just shut up overnight like it some of the restaurants did mm. next day there was people decided right away they weren't going to spend money mm. that's when they closed the restaurant down and have it as a venue now mm. but uh, we were growing the food for the restaurant and where the asparagus is and up there say so said the very first year we'll grow potatoes and by God, he planted potatoes in that big area. We had potatoes for the restaurant for the next six months when we were finally digging them up. So this is where they have their weddings and whatever. I had a couple of wakes and uh, a couple of
couple of other functions that they've enjoyed down here. Getting back, that's the remnants of the fruit and vegetable garden we had. A bit of rhubarb left there. That's all. <laughs> that's all. It's a lovely area. The trees deaden the sound of traffic too. And it's cooler here with all the trees. And... That's the espalier of our apples there. You know, the idea is to espalier pretty well all trees now because they, the birds only take the fruit at the top. You can't prune them properly, you can't, you can't cover them. So we went in for espaling, espaling these apples. And the different ones, there's Granny Smith, there's um, Bramley Seedling, as um, different ones, I think I've got them written down somewhere. But uh, the idea, of course, is to, to get them going across like that. There's an ideal one there in the Granny Smith. Um, the only way that I can put this right now is to graft into here to put your one along here. There's um, some I need to do some more pruning. I do a summer pruning, but in winter time I'll do another one and I take these out to thin it out a bit. There's a few apples on that tree. You can see how we have to keep them down low because they grow and there's a lot of blossom on that again in springtime. But you can't let them grow big these days. There's too much work attached to them. And Yvonne's been planting these here. Hope they're surviving. Natives. It's a native of some kind. Yes. A neglected grapefruit. Let's see. Yes, neglected grapefruit. The olives even, you can't espalier them. Mm. I haven't, haven't done it. But uh, you see, that because of the lack of water, there was lots of flowers on them, but uh, there was heaps of flowers. There's none. Some trees grow very quickly, you know. This is a Virgilia, this one here, as a Cutamandra. These grow very, but they don't last a long time. They die when they're about 14 years old. So a lot of these are not natives, are they? You come to examine them, that isn't, that one isn't, that isn't, that isn't. That's a golden eye. And it's to has, it has to stay there. We can't uh, let anybody saw that one down. Well, they use it in homeopathy. And uh, I believe, um, reading about it at one time, that the uh, royal family used that for their horses. Just for what? I don't know. A globe artichoke. We eat them when they're young. And uh, it's really quite a pretty flower. It's, it's starved here. But these are the seeds. In fact, we planted these seeds at one time. I can't with this one. And they've developed and grown into um, artichoke. They easily propagate. They also grow artichoke. That's an Italian one. There's another one, a French one, that says likes. Yes. But we had a whole row of them here. Yeah, there's another artichoke. You see, we had these. And of course, when they're in full um, bloom, as you might say, it, it fills an area that big. And then we can have the globe artichokes to eat. You leave one or two and you've got these beautiful big spikes. But I'd like to do 
more for the pear trees. I've tried to bring it more over. But there's not been the growth of new laterals to make a, to make that a closed in arch. Mm -hmm. uh, to make it more shaded. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, you can see where I could have grafted on in that second one. This one's not so bad, but that one should have had a grafted inside. But it's, it's lovely to be under it. And these are laburnums. They're exotic. They're from an English well-known tree in England. We could, you can do archways with laburnums. With golden chain, I think they call them. Mm. It's a yellow flower that comes down in spring. Right. Very pretty. Yeah. This is a flower in Japanese. You, some people are inclined to put too much weight on, they break it. Yeah. Uh, some you can do that and some you can't. Some branches you can. And the younger the better. So it's not to wait till they get old to do it, it's when they're young, mm. to train them when they're young. Them, yeah. Young laterals, yes. A lot of things have been planted, but many, many of the plants have either died out, um, not wanted, uh, because this last couple of years I've not done the work down here. Um, and and uh, Frank has taken over, and Frank has done less gardening, but he's done the clearing up. When it comes to a garden this side, they have to do the gardening, plus the pruning and the caring of the 65 fruit trees. And, and the path and the little uh, steps there. And, uh, that's when he took it over from me. I, was, I must have been 1991, I thought to myself. I just can't go down there doing what I have been doing. So he said, well, I can't do the gardening, but I can do the clearing up and the tidying up. And, uh, and that's what he has done, which, which looks great. It's fine. It's something I couldn't have done. And where we did have other things planted, he cleaned them all out. We had a big raspberry bed there. He's cleaned it all up and put native grasses in. Both Serge and Frank are sort of um, putting in a water system where it comes down over those rocks in Pekia. But, say, but Frank loves to create things and uh, he thought about that, Serge had thought about it. But perhaps Frank will be able to do it one day, have a nice waterfall over those big bricks. I think Yvonne planted these. That's a nice little spot to, to sit in. We did have a friend who's, who did come and he said, can I come and do some gardening with you, with me? I said, sure. So we brought him down here. And um, he just loved stones. And he put all, did lots of little jobs. He's lined this with stones all the way down. And if there's that been bearer, he gathered up stones from the bank and over there by the stream and put them in there. And I thought they stabilized the bank for one and gave it another dimension, look better. And that's the original stuff from Serge. This is uh, Frank. The two men between them have done a good job. One in the initial stages and the one now, Frank now, yes. And he's done the sculpture there as Frank. And the one at the top there of the lovers. Um, very interesting. So he's actually modelled and done them himself and painted them. And uh, they are. 
I agree. But the one at the top I like. Yeah, you like that one. So do I. Yes. Love to get into this and do something with it. My bones don't let me. No, it's not, it's not that it's not in my mind. It's in my mind how much I would love doing it. Okay. My bones don't let me.